All right, YouTube, there's yet another NSA, well, partially NSA-related story out, the title being Exclusive U.S. Directs Agents to Cover-Up Program Used to Investigate Americans. Oh, doesn't that sound familiar? Uh, it's from Reuters, and I'm assuming other you know places will pick it up now or later. Um, a secretive U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration unit, which isn't just the DEA, by the way, is funneling information from intelligence intercepts, wiretaps, informants, and a massive database of telephone records to authorities across the nation to help them launch criminal investigations of Americans. Now, the stated mission goal of this particular group is to catch essentially drug lords, drug runners, drug smugglers, the sort of people that you would want to be caught. Uh, people who are either growing producing or dealing or organizing thereof the uh, large shipments of drugs uh, across the border and elsewhere. And, of course, normally if a story like this broke, nobody would have any problem with it. But because we now know about the NSA materials and because, by the way, uh, the NSA along with uh, the IRS, the CIA, the FBI, and the DHS are all working with this group, um, because we know about that information, we can presume that this program is going to be used for more than simply people who are smuggling narcotics. Um, I think it starts with good intentions, as with most... Uh, I, I will give the government credit. Most of the programs that they start originate with some sort of good intention. For instance, the Patriot Act, which is a huge problem now and never should have been used in the first place, uh, primarily was put into place in the first uh, in the first time period in which it existed because, oh, terrorists, we got to fight them over there so we don't have to fight them over here. And, of course, it just got misused. Uh, the problem being, politicians author bills, and they create them. Then the lobbies and bureaus use them for their own greedy ends. Uh, this has been a, a problem in Washington for many decades. It's nothing new. So, obviously, they're using these bits of information. The NSA collects most of it, and then these other groups are also collecting information and intel on basically every American citizen and now using it to fight uh, drug traffickers, supposedly. Uh, the problem being that, um, as this article points out, and it's going to be the link to the, the article will be in the description, uh, it raises some civil rights issues. Uh, civil rights issues of if you if all of this is classified and we're not exactly sure where this info is coming from, it gives anyone that's claimed to be running drugs who is being targeted by this program uh, a little bit of a problem in court because they can't unseal these documents and actually go through them and have the proper tools necessary to wage a defense. And they had some person from you know Harvard Law School in here talking about how it's essentially unlawful for them to be doing this through this program. Uh, you can't search out entrapment because you're not exactly sure who's doing it under what circumstances or where they're getting their information from. And again, things start with good intentions and then go downhill from there when you've got a political system that it's operating from. My guess would be this is already being used, similar programs are already being used to nab any criminal under the sun and that it will continue to be used for lesser and lesser crimes until you get a speeding ticket and suddenly your name and is in file on all of these different uh, reports that go out to these different agencies and every Tom, Dick, and Harry can hack into these programs, by the way, and, oh, you ran a red light ten years ago. You're a terrible person. Uh, we're going to give you some fraudulent charges here. This is how tyranny begins. It begins by saying we need to do this for public safety. We need to do this so that justice is served. We need, we need more money. We need more staff. We need more power because we're going to use it to protect the uh, American people. And that's all well and good. The problem being, once the lobbies and corporations that are associated with the lobbies and the bureaus and all these special interest groups get a hold of these laws and get their foot in the door, they misuse them. And we've seen it. Look at what the IRS was doing with conservative groups. It misused its power. Well, now it turns out that the IRS is buddy-buddy with this group that collects all sorts of drug trafficking data. 
and with the CIA and the FBI. These groups, there's no problem with these groups working together. Nobody cares whether the CIA and the FBI exchange information between the two of them because it legitimately does make people safer. The problem lies with them getting information from groups that are collecting in a blanketed manner data on all Americans and not targeting criminals. Efficiency tends to go down as the size of a program increases. We've seen it time and time before. Uh, that's why some little country in Europe, some little Switzerland, has no problem governing. You can walk from one end of the country to the other in four or five days. Uh, in the United States, it's much larger. There's a larger population. There are a lot more little bells and whistles and gears that go into a system that large. People don't seem to understand that, which is one of the uh, things that's behind the states' rights movement, the libertarians that go more for states' rights than individual rights, you can almost sympathize with them because things do, in general, not always, but do tend to work better on a state level because you've got, you're more accountable, potentially, to the people in your state, unless it's some gigantic state like California or Texas. It works just fine here in Vermont, by the way. Uh, and it works in a small state, whether it's a liberal or conservative. It doesn't really seem to make a difference uh, in the scheme of things. But this should be something that outrages Americans and the, uh, the so-called conspiracy theorists. <clears throat> Years ago, we're talking about the NSA collecting blanket data. And everyone thought they were crazy and, and they turned out to be right. They started talking about how, oh, by the way, they're collecting more than just metadata, and everyone thought they were crazy. And by the way, they're right. And they said that it was going to be used for crud, things other than terrorism. And everyone said, oh, of course not. That would be unconstitutional. We would be against it if that were happening, but we have no problem with it being used to hunt down terrorists. But the conspiracy theorists were right. And each time they've been proven right, the mainstream has said, we'd be outraged if you were right. If you were right, the government would have gone too far, but we don't believe that the government has gone too far. We discount what you're saying because you're a tinfoil hat-wearing nut. And each time they've been proven right. Time and time again, these people, we're not sure whether some of these people are well-connected and just know the ins and outs of the system well enough to leak info to the public, under a public profile and not get caught doing it, uh, or if they have some sort of connections with the government to begin with. We're not exactly sure where some of this information comes from, but it seems almost prophetic because they keep getting proven right. And I was one of those people years ago who said the conspiracy theorists were a bunch of nuts. And I said, well, of course the government's not tracking everyone's data. They couldn't do it because it's impossible. They don't have enough money or resources or man hours to do it with. I was wrong, and I've admitted that I was wrong on that before. And until fairly recently, when I finally realized the government would stop at nothing to reduce people's privacy, I would have thought something like this was impossible too, that they couldn't possibly be using it for anything other than terrorism, because that was kind of the goal of the Patriot Act that's enabling all of these programs in the first place. The Patriot Act was supposed to be that we could go after terrorists, particularly foreign terrorists, and to a lesser extent domestic terrorists, tempered by, of course, our existing constitution. The idea was, if you had this intel on foreign sources, it wouldn't be a problem to find members of Al-Qaeda, because, of course, Al-Qaeda spends all day on Facebook. Uh, they put all their bomb plans on YouTube. Everyone knows that they do this because they're so dumb. That was the purpose of the Patriot Act. I never supported the Patriot Act to begin with because I saw through it and I said this is going to be misused. I didn't go to the conspiracy theorist level with it, but I said it's likely to be misused. And I was right on that. I should have gone even further and said not only can it be misused, it will be misused in, in more ways than one. But the government has clearly overstepped its bounds and people keep claiming that they'd be outraged if the conspiracy theorists were right, and where's the outrage? Three times in a row now in regards to these programs, the most lunatic fringe individuals that everyone thought were completely batshit insane turned out to be basically completely right. And yet no public outcry has emerged from this. You see a lot of outcry online, 
where the audience is primarily younger and more libertarian than their older counterparts. You see very little happening in the streets. You see a scattered protest here and there. You saw a handful of protesters after the NSA story first broke, after the Snowden material already broke. What is it going to take? What, which straw is going to break this camel's back and get people out there and actually motivated to do something about this? The Brazilians marched through the streets by the millions because of the Olympics and because the government raised taxes. Kind of a little bit like our founding fathers got tired of being uh, taxed and told what to do. So they raised up against their own government too and protested until the government started shooting at them and they had no choice but to shoot back. People in other countries protest and burn cars for a lot less than people in this country do. I'm not sure why that is. I think part of it is that people are broken down into race and gender and creed and all of these things that aren't really problems in other countries, either because they've already started tolerating differences or because they're so intolerant towards differences that no dissent gets out on the streets. Here, uh, look at the Trayvon protests that have basically gone away now. There were feminists and gay rights activists at these things starting to rant about these issues. There were communists there, and they got shouted down because people actually had something in mind. Now, I never supported the justice for Trayvon nonsense. I thought that justice was already served to begin with, but they have the right to protest, and they did a better job at it than some groups of people historically have. I just don't understand why there were... Hundreds of thousands of people, for example, and I can remember this, and I know some people probably can't, because some of the people in my audience probably were very young at the time. I can remember back around 2006 to 2008, that general period of time, when, well, actually before that, too, when hundreds of thousands of people went to Washington, D.C. and protested the Iraq War. They protested it because it was wasting money and lives and because they didn't support war, and hundreds of thousands of them were there. And they did the same thing for the Patriot Act when it first came out. Now, for some bizarre reason, it could be because most of the people motivated enough to protest tend to be young and more liberal than their conservative counterparts, I suppose that because now a Democrat is in office, a black Democrat at that, they no longer have the reason to protest. We're still killing people in foreign countries, with drones now rather than boots on the ground primarily. We're still occupying land in other countries in the form of military bases. We're still arming Syrian rebels, which we have no reason to do and no right to do, even though these people are largely Al-Qaeda affiliates to begin with. We're doing everything that we were doing under Bush. In fact, more. The Patriot Act has been expanded now. It has a bunch of things tacked onto it. It'll take it's like a Bush built a Lego set and Obama expanded it further and took a couple other sets and joined them together and said, wow, I've got a cool Lego collection. And people don't protest. They don't even make a YouTube video about it. Look at me. I'm making a YouTube video on the subject and I'm still more passionate about the issue than 99% of the population. That's just sad. Um, Part of it being I don't live any, near any urban areas of any importance, so protesting would be a little more difficult because nobody here cares. Small town America problems. But people live in New York City, you know, there's over 10 million people, or they live in the Washington area, they don't do anything. The last time people were passionate was Occupy Wall Street, and that had nothing to do with terrorism, it had nothing to do with any of this stuff we're going through right now, what's it going to take to get people to get organized? It's like they've been so lulled into a sleep, they're so mind-numbed about these issues, they no longer care as long as they have their big screen TV and their suburban row house, they just don't give a crap what happens to, you know, Afghani children, they don't care what happens to their privacy, they don't need privacy because they never do anything with their lives. Uh, the most illegal thing they've ever done is probably throw a cigarette butt on the sidewalk. So these people don't care. There are an, an alarming number of people from all generations. You don't see them just among the youth. There are an alarming number of people who have said, why do I care if the government's watching me if I have nothing to hide? 
that's a crazy mentality. Number one, we've seen historically when people have that mentality, it does inevitably lead at some point to tyranny. Uh, and you don't want that. You can just ask people who lived through East Germany about that. Number two, it's against the founding principles of the country. These people largely have not studied the Constitution. They have no idea what law is. They have no idea what human rights are. They have no idea what civil rights are. They just don't understand these topics. They get them from the mass media, the mainstream media, and they just don't understand. Uh, number three, and I've pointed this out, is a logical contradiction. If you have nothing to hide and therefore don't care, if, you're, if everything is out in the open to the government, why would the government, if they have nothing to hide, not make these programs public? Why do media outlets and leakers, whistleblowers, have to put themselves in the line consistently and have for years now about all of these programs just to tell us that they exist? Why does Snowden have to go seek asylum from Russia? if the government has nothing to hide. If there was nothing to hide and it was all above water and legitimate, Snowden wouldn't be in any danger. If these programs were all legitimate and nothing was being, no power was being misused, Snowden, Obama would have said, ah, oh, Snowden did a good job, he did his constitutional duty. Remember back when Obama said whistleblowers were key to a democracy and should be applauded for their efforts? Yeah, very few people remember that. But, of course, now it's different because Obama happens to be the sitting president. So, naturally, he doesn't like leakers and whistleblowers anymore. And I'm not saying it's about Obama or the Democratic Party specifically because it took two parties, again, as I've said multiple times, to create and put through the Patriot Act, to extend the Patriot Act, to fund the NSA, to vote against the Amash Amendment, which would have defunded that part of the NSA, and not to crack down on these programs, which are blatantly unlawful. Blatantly. The, the legal experts look at them and they say, this doesn't sound constitutional to me. The politi Some of the politicians look at it and say, it doesn't sound constitutional to us either. And a large segment of the population says, there's something screwy about this. This doesn't quite sound constitutional. The Fourth Amendment, I think, prohibits this and the First Amendment to some degree too, none of these people are willing to take action though. They're the sort of decadent culture, they no longer care as long as they have their popcorn or their uh, Hot Pockets or whatever, their Coca-Cola. It's sad to see it happen too because this country, uh, the way it was founded, if it had adhered to those principles, would uh, unarguably be the best place to live in, on the planet. We're fast going the way of parts of Europe now, though, that seem to be slipping back into sort of a McCarthyish Cold War feeling. Uh, we've got all these problems in the Middle East and with Russia and China and everyone else. Uh, my goodness, the founders admonished us to play nice with other people and only to fight with other people if they attacked us domestically. Now we've been dragged down this gutter uh, with all of these other countries where we feel we've got to compete with them when we should be working together. There are actual threats in this world that could be averted if we simply just agreed to not fuck each other over constantly. And people largely in the political arena and certain media outlets, they say, well, that's naive. Everyone always fucks everyone over. Uh, there have been periods of peace in human history. Largely, the reason why this is happening is, number one, greed, of course. That just happens anyway. Number two, the government has started looking at its own citizens as enemies, or potential enemies, potential terrorists. What do you think the NSA is all about? Why would they need my phone? I don't have any phone metadata. I gave up my cell phone years ago and don't plan to get one, not just because of that, but because I get tired of being texted at 3 a.m. Um, why do they need my data? unless they have a reasonable suspicion that I'm doing something wrong, as is as per the Constitution. They don't, and they're not entitled to it legally. Under the Constitution, they're clearly not entitled to go through my private data. The problem being the Supreme Court is taking a hands-off approach, the Congress is taking a hands-off approach, and the President, for some bizarre reason, just like Bush, doesn't give a crap if they collect this data, and in fact thinks it's a great idea and then warns us that tyranny is not right around the corner when we've seen this happen before. We saw it in Nazi Germany, in East Germany, in the Soviet Union. Uh, we've seen it everywhere. Uh, people who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it. That seems to be what we're doing. And people don't care. They don't give a fuck. 
And it doesn't make any sense at all. And it's blatantly illegal.